let's now virtually travel to Hamilton, Canada and connect with Lucas Brock from McMaster University. In his presentation, Lucas will address how the Mark Drive Lab, located at McMaster University, is equipped to meet the challenges of electrification. More specifically, he will show a modular powertrain model that works in conjunction with the VI-grade static driving simulator, an NVH simulator, and a chassis dynamometer. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can all hear me. I'm very happy to be talking to you today. Thanks to VI Grade that made this possible, especially to Gary Newton, who motivated this presentation, and to Nadia Hausner, who made it possible with her technical team. So let's get this started. I'm going to share my screen here. Oops. Uh, it says I host to let me share my screen. Would you guys help me out? There you go. Okay. So now we're sharing. So I hope you can see my screen now. Sure. Okay. Yeah, thanks again for, for making this happen. Now, I'm going to be talking about what we've been doing here at McMaster University for developing new electrified powertrains using driving simulation. Um, and I speak to you from Canada, Hamilton, Ontario. And I'm in the Mark, Dra the Mark McMaster Automotive Resource, Resource Center. We are probably one of the largest in academia in North America in transportation and, elect and electrification. We are more than 400 researchers, a lot of funding coming in from private companies and, and government agencies that help us develop developing the new projects and the new systems for our vehicles. Um, one thing that we're very proud of is that we don't do research just for the sake of research. We are proud to see our projects and our designs in actual vehicles, in actual products. So that's something our partners um, rely relies on us when we when we partner with them. And this is the research areas that we have here at Mark. I will highlight. Let me grab my laser pointer. I will highlight electrification um, in the form of electric and hybrid vehicles because that's our bread and butter. So everything from developing new electric machines, controls, inverters, thermal management, battery systems, battery management systems, everything around electrification is our expertise. Most recently, we have included driving simulation and vehicle dynamics to our library of know-how as well. And these are other associated departments. As a university institution, we are not isolated in our bubble, looking just for the systems we're developing, we're also attached and connected to, to other sciences to um, also have a broader view of our designs. So health, aging, and inclusion is very important, as well as well connecting with software people to be up to date with them. And other and transportation, let's say, from the system level, not only from the vehicle level. So these are just examples of how we're connected to other uh, institutions inside the university. And those are a couple of labs and equipment that we have here at the McMaster Automotive Resource Center, the Mark Institute. So we have a power electronics lab, powertrain testing machine where you can put your uh, powertrain system completely assembled and tested as an assembly. We have a high-speed electric machine dyno where we can characterize electric machines and, and test them under different loads. We have an energy storage laboratory where we can cycle different batteries and test different battery management systems. We have a chassis dyno that allows us to test the vehicle performance from the vehicle level, not only from the, the powertrain level like this one. And we have the driving simulator. Now, when we got the driving simulator, we were thinking, okay, let's use all of the capabilities of the other labs 
to help us building the models for the simulator, right? And that makes sense. Um, and, and that worked. I mean, we did that. But then we started to realize that the simulator is also a powerful tool for feeding the testing equipment with realistic loads, with realistic scenarios for testing and validating the components. So I think that goes without saying, when you have a driving simulator, you have a loop. You always have a loop where you can use the equipment to build models, but you can use the model to feed back to the equipment what you need to test. That was a major breakthrough here for us. And that's how we call our lab, the Mark Drive uh, Lab. That's our simulator. It's a, a customized version of the static sim provided by VI Grade. It has a full vehicle facing a curved screen, uh, a, a full very North American vehicle facing a curved screen. Uh, we have force feedback in the steering wheel, the complete hydraulics in the brakes, steering and seats are also active. And we have a, a small HMI um, touch screen in the, in the cabin to assist the driver and to indicate um, the, the tests and also to, to change parameters in the vehicle model and all that. Plus, as for the software, we have VI GraphSim running. We have VI Word Sim most recently that allows us to create scenarios as I'm going to show later. And we have VI Sim Sound uh, to manage the sound cues for the driver and passengers here. Um, so it is the state of the art of the static sims in a nutshell. So a couple of applications that we have for our, for our sim include artificial intelligence and machine learning by testing driver interaction with connected and autonomous systems, emulation of sensors and perception systems. Uh, we also program traffic agents and, and uh, classify driver behavior. We do lots of driving data acquisition as well for training machine learning algorithms. We also <clears throat> create virtual proving grounds, either by creating mock-up cities or mock-up environments or digitalizing real environments, what we call digital twinning of environments. We test multimodal transportation systems with partners that we have for the transportation business in general. And again, our bread and butter is the powertrain system, system development. Just a couple of pictures of the control room. That's myself pretending to work. And the chassis deck. Right, so I'm gonna talk about powertrain system development and how driving simulation assists us in that. And this is a very general presentation, so you don't have to be a powertrain expert to understand what I'm saying, but it gives you a perspective of how much useful the driving simulation or the driving simulator is. Now, this is the traditional approach to powertrain development. You have simulation and you have experimental um, testing. So basically, the virtual development consists of defining the performance requirements, selecting the architecture, running initial sizing of the components, and then you start offline optimizations to see um, how good your system can be in a virtual environment. And then when you go to testing, which we call physical development, you go to roller benches or dynamometers and you actually test the components you prototyped assuming you were right in the virtual development. Now, this is just a summary of what I just said. So basically, virtual development includes sizing and defining operation, and includes designing control strategies, uh, defining the performance requirements, component sizing, and a bit of NVH, and the resources are simulation resources. Now, as for the physical development, it starts with static physical experiments, like in the roller bench or in, in separated components being tested, to physical and dynamic testing, which includes road testing and, and, other, and other maneuvers you can perform in proving grounds, right? And of course, the resources are prototypes, a chassis dyno maybe, a proving ground is always in order with different slopes, so you can test gradeability. All of that is included in the physical development. Now, when we analyze those two, 
of course, they are connected, but it feels like there is a gap between those, those two steps, the virtual and the physical development. And it's highlighted if we see what kind of things we're putting in the loop here. So for example, in the virtual development, you have the model in the loop that you can play with, and you have software in the loop that you can ch change and test, but then you only have driver in the loop and hardware in the loop when you go to the actual vehicle and you prototype and build and deploy the systems and components you developed. So it feels like it's missing something. Um, so that's just making the case for driving simulation, right? So when you add driving simulation, you add this uh, blended component. You blend the development between virtual and physical. And that's how it fills that gap and blends your development. So that's why we acquired the driving simulation in the first place. So to speed up a little bit, um, the, the process here at MacMaster consists of modeling components and the vehicle, leveraging all the labs and equipment that I showed before, then selecting our architecture of that vehicle that we're modeling using our unique powertrain template. Then we validate that model with experimental results with the data that we generated from road test or from uh, our, our equipment. And then the model is ready for testing new proposals for testing improvements that we want to do. So this is a glimpse of our powertrain model, our template. So it consists of high fidelity battery models that we have in our library. They could be equivalent circuit models or physics based models or even thermal models that we have. Uh, and then you select whatever you want to include here for your analysis. Then we have a diverse library of powertrain topologies. And I don't know if you're familiar with the, the terms here, but it's electric vehicles, parallel hybrids, series hybrids, and even conventional, conventional powertrain. And this is kind of how our template works like. So for example, if I wanted to model a conventional powertrain, I would activate those components here. So engine, clutch, gearbox, and final drive. But if I wanted to, to test a series hybrid, then I would add the components that are specific to a series hybrid vehicle right here, for example. And then the model that we created manages this change automatically. Um, so yeah, and then we have a model for road, whoops, for road load strategies as well, and a library of tests and test cycles that we can run with real people driving the vehicle. So to test the vehicle, we have created diverse scenarios. This is one of the proving grounds that we created for powertrain development using our VI WordSim license together with a, the plugin for Roadrunner. So we have a circle here for testing dynamic cornering. We have different slopes here for testing gradeability, a mock-up CD scenario and a straight line to test performance. So this is a mock-up proving ground for testing the model and validating it with actual data that we have from experiment. Then this is how it looks like from, from inside the simulator. And for testing, especially consumption and emission using our models, um, we have developed urban environments, highway environments, but also standard roads that allow us to run drive cycles uh, interactively with real drivers. And that was a major step further to that blended idea between simulation and prototyping because now we're not just relying on the simulation of a drive cycle that is run for for consumption and emission testing we're also running the model with the real person running the drive cycle which is what happens when we go to to homologation of that system with with the government so you're adding that step you're adding the human component earlier to your development and that is hugely uh, important for assessing the emission and the consumption that you will have in the future when you actually are homologating your system. Of course, the results are only as good as your model, but again, we have all that labs and equipments to, um, to improve the models and to, to make accurate models from. Yeah, besides drive cycles, standard drive cycles, 
We also run realistic cycles with traffic, with different driving conditions on the highway, on residential areas. And that gives us a perspective of what would be the actual consumption, not only in terms of homologation, but in terms of real usage. So to finalize just a quick example of what we've done so far, um, we model the electric vehicle and that consists of selecting the appropriate components in the powertrain model and then adding um, the properties of the battery and the motor for that vehicle. And here it's just simplified information to illustrate what I'm saying. Then uh, we validate the energy consumption of that of that model with experimental result, as I was saying. And then we validate the road loads and the performance, whether if it's just, let's say, longitudinal performance, or if it includes drivability uh, in other terms, and also uh, even laterally if we want it. So that makes our model ready for the new proposals and the new system that we want to, to develop. And yeah, I don't have the results here to show you for some reason. We did have some results for that. But in this case, we turned a battery electric vehicle into a series hybrid. So basically we added a range extender and then we assessed the consumption and the range for that. So imagine if a manufacturer, if a vehicle manufacturer wanted to, to make an electric vehicle they already have in, and put a range extender on it or make it a parallel hybrid, that's the type of simulation we are ready to, to do and to accommodate and to show the results that uh, what would happen and what are the things that we should that we should be attentive to. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I think this is just illustrating what we added for the range extender. And then moving forward, um, we recently acquired an NVH desktop simulator. So for electric vehicles and hybrid vehicles, NVH poses a new challenge, right? Because NVH was very important for conventional vehicles with engine only, but, oops, my lights just went off. Um, but um, with electric vehicles, now other sounds are more um, apparent to the driver. So that's why we decided to get an NVH desktop simulator to even smoother that blending development. And finally, what we've been calling the Mark Drive 2.0 is the next generation of our lab will include not only the connectivity between the lab and the other equipment, but also we are scoping new software and hardware for adding different agents to the loop and adding different driving agents to the loop. So right now we want to make this uh, connected environment for testing not only vehicle systems, but transportation and mobility systems in general. So I know this was very quick and I know uh, it was not very much detailed, but feel, feel, feel free to reach out and talk to me in more detail. I'll be happy to, to talk to you and answer your questions. Thank you.